Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy Bourdoncle. I'm CEO of Edera Technology. I'm here with Victor Orvat, which is our main developer for Edera Cloud Management. Who we are? We are a French startup, 15 people, and we work on multi cloud management and optimizations. We are involved in the OpenStack community since Diablo. See, that's it, or why that we work with OpenStack. And our product, the name is Edera Cloud Manager, helps companies to manage their infrastructures inside or outside the data centers. And of course, our product is deployed on premise inside our customers' data centers. Which are our customers? Our customers are big and medium companies, companies like Book Telecom. Peugeot, or many French agencies. So I know, guys, what you are thinking. You are thinking, oh shit, yet another cloud management platform. I know there is a lot of management platforms in the market, but I will explain to you why we are different. First, as many multi-cloud management platforms, we are able to manage different cloud infrastructures inside the data center, in private, or in public. This is a basic feature for multi-cloud management platform. But we provide more. Our customers don't only need to spawn VM on private or public. They need to provide control and governance to their infrastructures. They need to align their IT or process with the platform to manage their infrastructures. That's why they need governance and control. More than that, our customer, which is the IT operation guy, reports to the business and need to provide quality of service to the end user. And he reports to the CFO. And the CFO need more and more cut costs, so he needs to have cost effectiveness infrastructures. That's our way to imagine and build a cloud management platform. It's multi cloud, it's governance, and it's quality of service and cost effectiveness. Look, have a deep sight on the feature. Our platform is a single pane of glass to manage private infrastructures and public infrastructures. We have connectors to Burmator, VMware, OpenStack, Microsoft SCVMM soon, and on the public side, we have Amazon Web Services and soon Azure OVH, it's a French hoster, and GC. We provide a unified service management feature to all these infrastructures. We provide automation and orchestration linked to external tools like Puppet, Chief, The Foreman, and Crowbar, what, uh, whatever you use inside your data centers. And we provide optimization tools. What we call service management. For us, service management is based on a policy-based governance. We have policy for the build phases, which is the resource, and define which cannot network, virtualization, until the middle layer, and what is the behavior that I want for the run, running phases of my services. And we have different behaviors like ability, availability, optimization, or scalabilities. And we bring together policy from resources and policies from behavior to create a service that anybody using our system can uh, instantiate very easily. For optimization, we have three kinds of optimization. The first is quality of service for the end user, the end user experience. The second one is operational efficiency, to be sure that the infrastructure is healthy, and the cost effective. And for each specific feature, we add a bunch of algorithms specifically designed to improve these three characteristics. We have an advanced rules engine to be sure that the behavior running well to ensure the quality of service. We have, for example, anomaly detectors to uh, organize and provide the operational efficiency, for example, to detect a bottleneck inside the data center for a storage or something like this. And for the cost effectiveness, we have a uh, agnostic capacity management to be sure that the private infrastructures is used well by the different uh, solutions that we provide and we pilot inside the data centers. So after the slide, I hope that was not too boring. 
It's turn for Victor to play the demo of our software. Thank you. I have the honor of presenting you our interface on this uh, demo server. This, what you see here, is the, i try to make it a little bit bigger. So yeah, uh, what we see here is the administrator's view of, uh, of our interface. In the administrator view, you see everything. But because we do provide role-based access control, you can have roles like, for example, our marketing team. They can only create and define services. A particular department might just see their running instances and not others. There may be quotas installed that will give them only a part of, what's, uh, a part of uh, resources and make sure that they stay within this part. The administration happens down here. Otherwise, we have three blocks that uh, are the definition of your infrastructure so that Hedera Cloud Manager HCM knows it. You build the services, and then you run instances of these services. So just, just as a reminder, the service is a purely, it, it is a definition. It is, a, it is like a template that serves you for creating instances. It is purely descriptive. It is purely logical. You tailor it to your needs. I start with the instances to show you how our running instance look li looks like. Here we have. Uh, a service which is actually um, uh, two VMs that run within OpenSUSE 13.1 on an open stack, which happens to be a SUSE Cloud 4. On the dashboard, you see, uh, you see already one of our main points, the metrics that get retrieved. This dashboard is completely customizable. You see there are already buttons like saving or editing it. Uh, which means I can show there the graphics that I, want to that I want to see. There you see the available memory and the idle CPU. If you see, look at the numbers, both of the instances don't do much, so they are relatively idle. You, you can, of course, uh, show there any metrics that you want. And here you see that in one graph you have at the same time the per node metrics, like the available memory for one and for the other node, and also a statistical aggregate like an average or like a standard deviation that you can define for the whole uh, service. You also can, there are other widgets which are possible, like you see here rules that triggered on the metrics or warnings that have been mounted for your nodes. In the configuration, you see what kind of software has been installed on the VMs through HCM. In this case, we didn't install anything because we didn't put a puppet agent inside. But let me show you another service that happens to run on uh, vSphere. And there, we did configure the VM itself. And there is a puppet agent installed. If I click on it, I see the details that it, to which masters it connects. I could change that. Here, it connects to the HCM server, which is the puppet master. Now, we use puppet, and we are quite happy with it. But as you will see, nearly everything in HCM has been built to be modular and extensible. So plugging in something, uh, something like Chef, would, because, which you might prefer because you do everything else with Chef 2, is entirely feasible. I go back to our OpenSUSE service. In the resources, I see that we have uh, two VMs. And I can see details of one. I can stop it. I can scale CPU or scale memory in the OpenStack sense that, uh, that is a changing of a flavor. Uh, this is a resize operation. I can migrate the VM to a different hypervisor. Or I can just see which IP addresses they have. And then I can connect. Uh, if it SSH is open, I can connect through SSH to it. Or do whatever I want with the IP address. In the monitoring section, you see the list of metrics, and you can combine them and get more. Now, the idea, our goal is really to get as many metrics from the whole stack that are possible. We can ask the hypervisors. We can ask the, the system of inside, running inside the VM. We can even get data from the applications if they give it in one form or another. For example, we can, we can get statistics from Apache. That way, we can create rules 
that combine metrics from the whole stack. And on the other hand, well, getting metrics like in this case, we get our metrics directly from the VM through SNMP. But of course, you might think that its uh, connectivity between the HCM server and the VMs is not always a given. So if there is no connectivity, what we can still do is that we can uh, connect to the controller node and ask Silometer to give us its metrics. That way, we can have data about a VM through Silometer, even if we don't have a direct connection to the VM. It is equally possible to get the data from something else. On vSphere, we can ask the vCenter to get data about the VMs. We could connect in the Microsoft world to a SCOM. We might even think of connecting to your Nagio system to, get, to collect the data that you want to have inside HCM. And we have a nice graphical editor here to combine metrics in a way that, that gives you directly a real-time preview. For example, here you have the total memory. And immediately you see, because the data is already there, it can be shown, you see what, what curve it would give you. This way you can have metrics for a node, or you can use statistical, statistical uh, functions to combine uh, metrics for the whole instance. Now we have this data. We collected all this data. We can visualize it. Great. Now what are we going to do with it? What's this? What, what can we do with it? We, we have several engines in HCM that work on this data. One is the anomaly detector, which, uh, which allows you to look later on on the collected data and to identify peaks, to, ident to identify things considered an anomaly. You have to configure it a bit. You have to give him a periodicity. To, to, to that he knows what is the periods of your workloads. Then he can as well do forecasting, and you can be informed when the forecast does not match the reality. That will be considered an anomaly. In the rules part, we can define short-term actions. So we just got these metrics. Now, what are we doing with them? We can we see, look at what you defined, the policies that you defined, or that you, you can define them for the whole service, or just now for this instance. And you can define that, for example, the CPU is too, is, is too, the free CPU is too low, the available memory is too low, or maybe the Apache gets too busy. So what are we going to do? We can, might spawn another node. We might... If, it's, if we are talking about just metrics for one node, we can, uh, we can do a, a scale-in and change the flavor to have something more, more, to have a more stronger VM. We can also we can just send emails, we could call our web service, or we can go into your existing workflow manager and uh, tell him to, to launch an action. So integration into your workflow managers are, are also possible. Here, for an example, I can, I can do something with one node. I can scale in. And of course, the opposite is the same. If there is, if there is not enough happening, then we can scale down. We can take a node away. Our goal is always there to have the most efficient usage of your resources for the current situation. You see events and, and alerts that have happened on the service, workflows that have been run. Sorry, this resolution is slightly different from the one that I that I used to use. Scroll down, scroll horizontally. Yes. And here we can put another thing that we can do with our metrics is that we could put them into correlation, and we see whether there's a connection. Well, to give you a very very easy connection here, we see how much memory is available, and. What does the CPU do? And in our case, there is a correlation, because in both in most cases, there is nothing to do. And so there is a lot of CPU free and a lot of memory free. So in our case, it shows a nice correlation. But you might very well, another thing that you could put into, into perspective, 
would be that you put the CPU charge or the free memory and the number of requests that your Apache has to treat simultaneously, or your Nginx. To see, show you a completely different service, here is, are the hypervisors of vSphere. So here what we see are the metrics that we got directly from vCenter for its hypervisors. Again, I show you memory and CPU usage. You can define for how long these will be shown. In, in all cases here, these are nine hours that they have been shown for the last nine hours. But that could be any, any period you'd like. So that's it for showing you running instances. But uh, now I will show you how do these instances get created. Because after all, that's the goal of automation. You create your services. From these services, you can create many, many instances that all behave in the defined way. So first of all, you have to say HCM what you actually have. We still do bare metal deployment. So you can enter your different hosts, and uh, HCM can do bare metal deployment on them. But these days, of course, the main interest is that you register your existing cloud. Here, in this case, we have an OpenStack, the SUS cloud. And we have a vSphere infrastructure. So here you see in one screen what is happening on your on your clouds. And this uh, data is not just what HCM launches on it, but we have asked vCenter and, uh, o and uh, OpenStack directly how much is going on on them. So these are the total numbers for your clouds. And then, for example, for the OpenStack, you can see how, what hypervisors you have and what uh, VMs are running on it. Now we come to the services that I've already mentioned so often. Services are composed of seven policies. I won't go through the details of all of them, but just to show you an example for the OpenStack situation. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention? The expo floor will be closing in 30 minutes. The expo floor will be closing in 30 minutes. Thank you. All these forms are dynamic, which means that if I choose a field, in this case, I choose the OpenStack, and that's why I see then the values, the fields specific to OpenStack below. So in this case, I choose the project, that is the tenant. I choose the availability zone, and I choose the flavor. So each time I'm using this policy, it will create in the Nova availability zone, in the HCM tenant, a VM of type M1 small. I can also leave free. I can also choose not to define, for example, the flavor. Then I have to define it later. At each stage, things, you have to define the things that have not been defined earlier on. And how do these policies get combined into services? Or rather, here you see what a service really is. I show you the OpenSUSE service. You, have, you chose one of each policy. The idea of having your policies explicitly before is that you can reuse them, you can mix them, you, because many of them are independent from each other. The scalability policy, or maybe the orchestration policy, doesn't even have to do anything with a particular cloud. So you can reuse them between services. Other policies are a bit more dependent on each other. Here you see the hosting policies defines the type of VM which is running. The storage policies, in our case, defines the master image used. The network policy gives you the subnets that your VM have to, have to find, all, of course, among the, data, uh, among the infrastructure that we have found inside your OpenStack. Scalability says how much you can scale it. You could define that there have to be two minimum nodes at each time. So there have to be at least two for high availability. Maybe then you can have up to 10. So as long as you have to scale up, you can go up to 10. Uh, the system policy will deal with the signed volume and with the components that you want to install inside your, your VM. And the orchestration policy can predefine metrics and rules that trigger. So here you see that you, with, with this system, we really have the goal that you have all your clouds, all your services, all your instance in one hand, and you have a global view of what is happening, and you can be sure that you can enforce the policies that you want. You, we, I don't know whether we have time for questions. We are running here out of time. Uh, we have a booth over there. It is E58. Yeah. 
Yes, for the last 30 minutes, because it's closing, so be quick to go there. We have very cool pen to, to, to give you. And thank you for your attention. Don't hesitate to go to our website or wait Twitter and to contact us directly. Thank you. Thank you.